No, I'm actually either on my list. I'm going to finish. Uh, there's a whole bunch of documents I have to load in. Oh, oh, right. I, I got the feedback from Grant's yeah. yeah. But when you get little, uh, they actually uh, called me. I got a Which got to way more uh, They would never. But in our key quarters well, management they, plan. They, 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 they tried so, to get uh, the. No, but they're going to talk about it. They call some number. Well, first I'd like to call the public hearing job. Notice the public hearing. The County of Otsego will hold a public hearing on September 4th, 2019 at 8.55 a.m. at the County Otsego County Board Meeting Room, 197 Main Street, South New York, for the purpose of hearing public comments on the Otsego County Current Community Development Block Grant, also known as CDBG Project, 868-PF-28-17, Otsego County Tiny Homes, $300,000. The CDBG program is administered by the New York State Office of Community Renewal and provides resources to eligible local governments for housing, economic development, public facilities, public infrastructure, and planning activities with the pr principal purpose of benefiting low, moderate income Persons. The hearing will provide further information about the progress of the ongoing CDBG project, comments related to the effectiveness of the administration of the CDBG project will also be received at this time. The hearing is conducted pursuant to section 570.486 subpart 1 of the CFR and in compliance with the requirements of the Housing and Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. The Otsego County Board Chambers is, is accessible to persons with dis disabilities. If special accommodations are needed for persons with disabilities, those with hearing impairments, or those in need of translation from English, those individuals should contact Carol McGovern at mcgovernc at otsegocounty.com, 607-547-4202, at least one week in advance of the hearing date to allow for necessary arrangements. Written comments may be submitted to Carol McGovern, 197 Main Street, Cooperstown, New York, 13326, until September 3rd, 2019, dated August 28, 2019. Okay, anyone wishing to comment on this? Hearing none, uh, motion to close. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing closed. Okay, roll we'll call members. Frazier. Here. Farwell. Here. Clark. Here. Stammel. Here. Kennedy. Here. Oberacker. Here. Bliss. Here. Marietta. Here. McCarty. Here. Wilbur. Here. Kotnick. Here. Martini. Here. Lappin. Here. Shannon. Here. Here. Hopefully, we'll be right in the morning. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, open the floor to anyone who would like to speak. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Ajello, and I am here to speak on the issue of recession. Yes, I still am fighting to get my home back. My home, my 74 acres, that is now on the market for $300,000 by a co-worker. And I noticed that you have a resolution regarding uh, sexual harassment, which is long overdue. However, what about a resolution on just harassment by a co-worker at your home? For a year. I was told it was not work connected and there was no sexual component so I was just left out in the cult. I'd written emails, I'd spoken before that board and I had told them I have a co-worker who is the bidder who is harassing me with her family, her daughters, her neighbors, her tenants, and nothing was done. Nothing. So I am here to speak about discrimination as well. Also, all those properties that were returned, 
19 of them, which was an amazing thing considering that when I asked for extra time, when I had my money, when I was willing to pay an extra penalty, that treasurer said, no, I can't take it out of the brochure. No one will come to the tax sales anymore. Well, I didn't hear anybody getting all upset at this tax sale. And not only that, we had a little discussion with Frank Stone, who was the auctioneer, and Russell asked him, how does it feel to auction off properties that are occupied? Do you know what he said? Doesn't bother me. I could sleep at night because I don't see their faces. Well, you're looking at it right now. I am. And I hope that you are not like him. Can you sleep at night looking at the face of someone who has been discriminated against, who has been harassed and begged extra penalty, whatever, just please. We made an error. Bob Force, his wife in a wheelchair, who got told being ill is no excuse and don't make it personal. Something to think about. Can you ignore the face? I wish you well. Time's up. God bless. Thank you. All right. Don't start the clock until I tell you where I live at 180 County Highway 26. A 1963 mobile home. Beautiful. Thanks for it. You know, I am thanking God that we have a place to go where we're not being harassed. However, we have trucks coming through there at 60 miles an hour or more. You lowered the speed limit on the Back River Road. I don't know who petitioned for that. We need it in our place. There's constant accidents and one of the children are going to get killed waiting for a bus. It's wrong. Write that one down and that's for the record. So here we go, Warren County again. Five member ethics board. Some of the things they say make it very clear. They understand that you don't even give the impression of impropriety. The public's confidence in government for personal gain. You can't do it. Yet we did it here. Recession. I've talked to you before. Last month in 198 resolution, you're giving back property, vacant property, 55 acres right outside of Milford. You're giving it back. There's not even a home there. So who was that, the Delvin Corporation, that was suing you or going to go after you? Three years later, you give it back. You can do the same for Maria. Her house doesn't need to be sold. If you know the pain that she went through helping her husband, I'm glad she left the room. The first time ever, I was very sick for a couple of weeks. I got into some wild parsley. I would warn you to be away from it. And, of course, the hospital, oh, I think you got cancer. We're going to make a bunch of money on this. Well, guess what? I'm back and I'm stronger than ever and feel good. And I'm going to fight for her. And this will never end until you do the right thing. This year, you brought in over 600000 We count every penny of it. You budgeted for 200000 You got a windfall. Why don't you just go to the purchaser who is a, to, the, who's now selling it. She wants 300000 Why don't you give her the full money? Just give her that. So what if you lose some? What you ought to do is reprimand this person and let it be known that workers have no privilege over the public. In fact, we work for the public and that's what I do. If any of you are exploiting and going after the money that your parents have improperly or somebody that you know and you're waiting in the bushes to come and grab their property, well, God is watching everything. That's what my father told me. I know some of you personally. I've run into you on the street here and there. Please don't be afraid of me. I'm a little passionate about what I say and what I do. It's a whole different thing. I am the most peaceful person that you probably ever met. And I'll be frank with you, it tears me up to have to stand in front of you every month and ask for her to get her home back. Shame on you. And you better think about what's happening in this world overall. Representative Stammel, I respect the letter that you wrote to the paper and I thank the paper for printing it.
We can't count on what our financial future is going to be in this country. I look outside, see how dark it is? If you've ever been through a Florida hurricane, and I have, and I've been through on Long Island and other places, it's horrible. So pray for these people that are going through this today. Time's up. God bless you. Anyone else? Hearing none. Approval of the minutes. The August 17th. Bill 9. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Presentation of petitions, communications, and notices. I have a notice of claim, Brian and Julie Pala Anna versus County of Otsego. The nature of the claim is for negligence, carelessness, recklessness of the respondent causing personal injury as a result of a construction accident that occurred on the SUNY Oneonta campus. The amount of the claim is for a fair and reasonable amount of money to compensate those two individuals for losses, personal injuries, and other losses together with such other relief that the court deems just and proper. Okay, now we move on to special presentations, and today we do have a special guest, Senator Seward. Uh, welcome. We well, thank you. appreciate your taking the time to come to this. Thank you. We appreciate all you do for us. Here. Kind of say that. First of all, I want to just say thank you for the invitation to uh, join you here for a few minutes this morning. I know Andrew Christman was um, involved with working with my office to schedule this on your behalf, and I'm delighted to be here because I think this kind of uh, communication is very, very important. I want you to know that uh, whenever you send up uh, resolutions from this board, I do read them, uh, and uh, that's that's important part of communication. But nothing beats you know coming here and uh, being face to face to uh, talk about some some of the issues of uh, mutual concern. You know, during my years in the Senate, I have uh, always felt that it was extremely important uh, that uh, the state of New York have a good working close relationship with uh, local governments, in this case, uh, county governments. Because after all, I mean, you uh, deliver a lot of services uh, on behalf of uh, the state uh, to our uh, mutual constituents here in Otsego County. And of course, um, the, the decisions made uh, up in Albany have a direct impact uh, on uh, the issues that you confront right here at the county. So we need to have that kind of, uh, of a dialogue and, and communication and, and a close working relationship and uh, to make sure that, uh, and this is bad life wage for many years in terms of uh, against unfunded mandates, the cost shifts that go on. Uh, and uh, as we um, look at uh, this, this year's session of the legislature, and as you go into your budget season, there's some red flags that I think you, as a county board, uh, need to be dealing with. And right out of the gate is the, uh, the, the substantial changes in the uh, AIM funding, uh, which is, uh, in the past, has been state money that comes down to uh, towns, villages, and uh, cities. Of our state, it's a special, uh, you know, state state aid to these municipalities. Uh, this year's uh, budget uh, included both in the governor's proposal and the uh, finally enacted budget, which uh, I voted against this year's budget for this and other reasons. But uh, this year's budget includes a uh, 59 million dollar uh, cut in AIM funding uh, for. Um, uh, over 1,326 towns and villages around the state. Uh, every single town in Otsego County and all of the villages except Lawrence and Otego. Uh, <laughs> and, and the city of Oni uh, the cities will continue to get their AIM funding directly from the state. Uh, why am I telling you this? The, the, uh, the arrangement that uh, is included in this year's budget um, is this, that um, 
these municipalities will continue to get their AIM funding, but it's going to be taken out of the county sales tax uh, receipts. Uh, and that in, uh, that, that in my mind is something you're going to have to, uh, to deal with. Because uh, for Otsego County, um, our towns and villages, that totals uh, $331,320. Uh, that uh, will the state controller will be withholding that amount of money from your sales tax revenues in order to uh, use those funds to uh, pay the towns and villages uh, in what we call uh, now it's called aim related uh, payments. So they're going to be made whole. That's being taken out of the county sales tax. Uh, now, theoretically. Uh, with some changes that were made in terms of internet sales and additional sales tax charges on some internet sales that had, had not been previously uh, captured. Uh, theoretically, your sales tax receipts, because of that, are going, are going to go up substantially to cover this. But that's, as I say, speculative and theoretically. Um, so this is something to keep keep in mind and to watch uh, as the uh, as you put your next year's budget together. The uh, the state uh, is going to be having a uh, webinar. Uh, it hasn't been scheduled yet, but once they work, work out all the details of how, exactly how this transfer of funding is going to occur, uh, they are going to have a webinar with the uh, Department of uh, Taxation and Finance uh, Division of the Budget and of course the Comptroller's Office uh, to uh, bring everyone up to date on, a, on the details of exactly how that's going to, uh, going to work. But the impact here in Otsego County uh, over $300,000, $331,320 to be exact. Uh, another issue um, that uh, I think you, you need to be keeping an eye on as you put a new budget together, and that is um, uh, some of the changes in uh, uh, voting. Um, the early voting, uh, as well as uh, moving toward uh, electronic uh, poll books uh, and other equipment changes that um, are now will be required under, under the changes in state law. Now, I, for one, I, hey, I, I think we should make opportunities available for people to vote, make it as easy as possible. Uh, but the problem, uh, I did not support this, uh, these, these changes because there was no money behind them. Absolutely no money. Uh, now, since then, uh, in the budget, uh, there was uh, included uh, monies to fund the early voting for this year, as well as some equipment uh, changes that are will be required and that totals uh, what, what's in the budget to be distributed to uh, the counties is uh, just under 25 million dollars but once again the problem is that the state board of elections estimates that these changes ultimately uh, will be costing a uh, hundred and seventy five million dollars so there's quite a gap there in terms of what the state's providing and what the uh, statewide costs uh, are going to be by uh, across the state and the various uh, counties so um, obviously uh, next year's state budget uh, we've got a lot of work to do it seems to me uh, to uh, I'd like to see the AIM funding go back to being coming from state funds rather than out of your high your sales taxes and of course fully funding uh, the changes in the uh, election uh, process he here in the state of, of New York. Um, other issues uh, that uh, have been on the forefront this year is, uh, you know, the CHIPS funding, which is the local highway aid. Uh, the county gets a substantial uh, several hundreds of thousands of dollars here for Otsego County. Um, there was no increase in, in CHIPS this year. Uh, in fact, the budget that was passed at the end of March uh, did not include the uh, um, $65 million in extreme winter recovery funds. Thankfully, that was 
dealt with uh, one of the last things that was done before the summer recess was to uh, reinstate that extreme weather um, money. So at least the CHIPS program with the extreme uh, monies, uh, extreme weather recovery monies ha has been made whole. So um, that, that's a positive, although uh, obviously we're always looking for ways to uh, provide more funding through the CHIPS program or in any other way uh, to help you with your you know, local roads and bridges, uh, which uh, is an expensive, I don't need to tell you, it's an expensive proposition for you. Um, <clears throat> So we're, we're going to keep uh, working on that. Now one question I had for all of you uh, was, um, this is something else you have to keep, keep an eye on through your budget process, and that is in the, the couple of years ago, the uh, raise the age changes that were made in terms of how we deal with uh, what previously had been, uh, uh, well, these young offenders. And uh, they're, now, of course, a lot of, with all the changes, they're eligible for a lot more services, and the whole process has changed uh, considerably in dealing with these uh, individuals. And uh, at the time that was enacted, uh, it, we were assured, we as a legislature were assured that, uh, don't worry, this is not an unfunded mandate. The state's going to pick up all of the additional costs uh, for uh, the counties. Uh, I guess my question to you is, and maybe if you don't have the answer today, get it to me. I want to know how that's work going for you, how that's working out for you. Uh, because uh, uh, I know there's some monies uh, that have come in, uh, but uh, you got to take a look at uh, what the expenses are uh, with implementing uh, this uh, new uh, Raise the Age uh, program. So um, that's another, another item that uh, I think we need to keep our eye on both at my level and yours and any information you can provide me on the impacts of any of these things and there may be others out there uh, because I want to deliver the message that uh, you know, we cannot uh, continue to have these cost shifts uh, and just keeping on unfunded uh, uh, mandates. So, uh, there are many, many other issues out there, but Mr. Chairman, if there's time, I would you know, be happy to respond to any questions or Certainly. listen to any comments. Certainly. This is a very shy reserve group, but <laughs> maybe someone would have something to say. Ed, did I see your hand up earlier? Well, I was going to um, address your question on Raise the Age. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I'll have one of Dan Norton to have some stuff up for you like our, our probation director. And in this coming proposed budget, he has another position for a new probation officer that we need because of Raise the Age anticipation. And his understanding today is that that will only be partially funded by state reimbursement, that there's still some that's going to be on, on, on the local side. So there is cost to us. It may not be fully un, uh, unfunded, but there are, you know, some reimbursement for what he's anticipating. Yeah, we need to know that so that, you know, we can go back and make the case that, the, hey, this was supposed to be fully fully covered by the state because, once again, a decision made at the state capitol impacting a local budget, uh, there's ought to be money. If it's such a great idea, the state ought to be funding it rather than putting it on your backs, for sure. Yes, uh, Gary, did you? Yeah, uh, I, I'm just going to be too, uh, in addition to the fixed costs that Ed was talking about, uh, really depends on how many offenders we have and what kind of offenses in a small county like ours, each one has a significant, has a significant proportional uh, effect on us. So it may be a year or two until we really have a sense of how this is going all, all together. And, and I have a, a real, just a quick question, uh, uh, a curiosity, I should know this. First of all, thank you for reading the resolutions we sent you. I, you know, it's, it's nice to know that they don't just disappear. Can um, you cut out some of those whereasses? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, do you do you uh, get a count of the, the vote on that resolution as you were reading it? Is there somewhere you can tell whether it was unanimous or it was you know eight to six or, or whatever? Um, I think that's not. I, I, I don't recall the seeing numbers. Okay. But uh, you know, obviously by a majority, it wouldn't have been. Yes. Hit my desk. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, sometimes it matters what kind of majority. It is. Mm -hmm. So okay. Thank you.
Well, I consider in terms of um, Otsego County, obviously this board is the official voice of the people of Otsego yes. County. I got yes, myself, but where is the statutory authority for the state to basically confiscate a portion of our sales tax for their use? Um, <laughs> wait, uh, I, I would have a tough time defending what, what, what was enacted because I did not favor it at all. Um, it, um, that, that, that obviously with the, with the enactment of the budget, the state law was changed in order to allow this to, to occur. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's, so they, that's so how they it's made a down. change to the uh, sales tax law of the county, authorizing the county to collect sales tax, which said that they could then therefore confiscate any portion they deemed. We did, uh, uh, they did change the. Um, you know, in terms of the internet sales, I mean, not all internet sales were being taxed, taxed in terms of sales tax. Oh, yeah, I understand. So now, that. now that you know that change was made, so you you, um, uh, you but know, that's, changes are. Like you said it's not a guarantee, so right. No, you it's might not see anymore, and they'll still take the money. So in essence, they're taking it from what well, we're duly authorized to charge people to collect for use on our behalf. So that's the down, that that's the downside of obviously of, of, of the way this has worked uh, for this year um, in terms of the statutory authority it's just simply a you know was, that was dealt with you know in the enacted budget Challenge that. Michelle, did I see your hand? Yeah, I had a question not about the budget, but about the rural broadband project. Um, so I know that this is, it's in its third year now, and um, I think it might be a year behind schedule. It was supposed to be finished at three year three, and it might be taking four years. Um, and so I know it's in, at different stages in different places, but has there, has there been any talk about addressing there are a few residents that are not covered in these census blocks and I have some in my district is there any talk about addressing those last few people you, left in the state who still do not have yeah, that, that is a huge concern because um, you know, let's face it uh, I hear from people who are uh, trying to sell their their property their homes and uh, they said, you know, the first question asked is, is there internet service here? And when the answer is no, they tend to move on to, to look at another different property. And so, uh, let's face it, with, uh, you know, broadband, is uh, that's the way people live today. That's the way people conduct business today. It's absolutely imperative that, uh, you know, we have that available. You know, to all New Yorkers, and that's particularly a challenge in the rural areas. But without it, our rural areas are being, shall we say, left behind, and, and there's a real economic impact on us. And so, um, th over the last, uh, there was a three-year cycle of uh, there was uh, uh, 500 million dollars uh, that was distributed uh, to uh, various providers. Now, uh, uh, Seagull Electric Co-op. You know, took advantage of that. Other parts of my district, other pro uh, providers, to expand uh, broadband. Uh, and, and of course, with the agreement that uh, the state has with Spectrum, there's they're also supposed to be expanding broadband uh, as well. But as you point out, and I hear from people every day. Uh, some people are just not going to get reached uh, by by those programs. Now, on um, I think it's on September 17th. I'm, I'm going to be participating in a, a uh, public hearing up in Albany. We're going to be getting into this issue of uh, what needs to happen next in terms of broadband uh, throughout the state. And uh, in, in my mind, uh, we need to re-up the um, the program that that helps providers get into some of these uh, more rural areas because it is more expensive for them. They don't get the return because of the sparsity of uh, population. Uh, so as a matter of just normal business, they're not going to go there. So that's why uh, you know, we need to, to, shall we say, incentivize them or subsidize them, whatever the word you'd want to use. And so. Uh, 
I think we need to continue to do that because um, now some people say, well, uh, the, uh, those last remaining folks that don't have broadband can use the uh, like satellites and so on. But I haven't heard good things about that in terms of the quality of service and reliability of service. Uh, and once again, my concern is it holds our rural areas back. So. Uh, to answer your question directly, uh, that's you know we've got a hearing coming up in the uh, in the Senate and the Assembly. Uh, it's a joint hearing uh, to talk about what needs to happen next, and I'm going to be there advocating that we do need the. But yet the Chesapeake Bay doesn't have its own uh, line item in the state budget. Mainly, and this is an issue because the federal government is trying to encourage states, including New York, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, etc., to take more of a lead in implementing that. And it's expected that the local governments will be driving the charge and getting a lot of the work done. But in partnership with the DEC and the Upper Susquehanna Coalition, and uh, you know, obviously the county's a headwater, it's not just the watershed, and yet you know, our local governments are cashed up. You know, we have two percent property tax cap. They have roads to maintain, services to provide, more unfunded mandates to, to deal with. So I was just wondering if there's any intention from the state level to help local governments kind of defray that cost in terms of funding. That specific um, need is uh, is new to me. You know, you're just bringing it up to me in terms of the uh, of, of that, but that's certainly something I, I will take back for sure. Because I, once again, um, uh, this this is a you know what we do here does have some. Uh, I mean, it has tremendous impact, but any any uh, uh, mitigation type work that's being done here does benefit us locally, but for the most part, the benefits are downstream. And so I think it's a, a more uh, general uh, concern. And thus, I think you know, the funding should come from a broader base rather than just these local <coughs> municipalities. Yes, Andrew. I just wondered about the um, ongoing energy issues, Con Edison with their moratorium on hookups downstate, and uh, we have our our own challenges here and, and in some of the surrounding county regions. Is, is the state government going to pick up any kind of legislative um, action or you know it, to try to uh, address some of the you know some of the um, ongoing issues I think uh, that that are occurring all across the New York State. You know I don't. I know that um, you know there's uh, two sides uh, to this whole issue, and obviously Otsego County is working on its own energy policy. But that 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 helps our county. It doesn't necessarily. Uh, it's not a policy that NYSEG is going to follow necessarily. You know, so it, is the state looking at any kind of um, overall, uh, I guess, action or pressure in terms of coming up with uh, an overall solution that. Is going to apply, you know, to to uh, you know the elect the gas and electric companies with this issue. Well, the um, as you know, down downstate, uh, and it impacts us a bit here locally. You know, there's a moratorium on new gas uh, uh, hookups uh, because of uh, you know the lack of availability of, of natural gas, even though there is a demand for it, and we have. A smaller scale, but we have a similar dynamic at work right here in Otsego County. Um, the uh, administration and you know, the governor seems to be hell bent not to do anything in terms of uh, pipelines. Um, additionally, but we'll, we'll see. I know that that's a that's a huge issue downstate uh, that's holding up a number of projects, and uh, we'll see where that how that plays out in terms of. Um, Energy policy at the state level. Most of the most of the attention is, is focused on the new climate uh, mm -hmm. uh, change uh, legislation that was enacted this year. Uh, that's going to take some time to play out because there's a uh, board that has been formed. It is being formed to uh, develop you know policies how uh, New York State uh, can be uh, fossil free in their target dates. Uh, <coughs> And so uh, uh, that's 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 uh, obviously with the renewable and sustainable energy sources are real key to our future. 
uh, I have some concern about what are we going to do in the meantime in terms of you know, meeting the needs and demands that we have uh, uh, before we get there because right now uh, renewable sources cannot uh, handle the demand that's there today. So uh, this, this thing has to play out uh, a bit at the state level. Uh, I know uh, FERC at the federal level uh, is taking over the uh, approval of pipelines uh, such as that Constitution pipeline that was proposed a few years ago. Uh, whether or not that will ever be built is, remains to be seen. So there's a lot of moving parts here. But it's an important issue and I, I, I await the results of our Otsego County Energy group. Uh, I, I'm waiting to see, get, get all the answers from that group. <laughs> Hopefully we'll come up with a model that can be adopted by anyone. Yeah, I don't... Uh, all the answers. Personally, I don't, I don't see uh, uh, you know, natural gas uh, and uh, the sustainable uh, renewable source of energy as, as being mutually exclusive. I think uh, there is a way to, to uh, incorporate both, at least in the short term. Uh, and Because uh, there is demand for it. Uh, and uh, that's my personal view. Uh, I, I, I got to tell you, nat uh, natural gas is a heck of a lot better than uh, foreign dirty oil that most people use to heat their homes today. And um, and, so, and some of these big users that are on these, these interruptible supply in terms of natural gas, like the colleges, the hospital, and at least in Oneonta, they, they have to switch to this foreign dirty oil, I call it, on the days that uh, they, they are, are interrupted in terms of uh, natural gas supply. That's not good for the environment, for sure. Did you mention yes, one, okay. one comment on broadband? Yeah, through? yeah. Um, I think it's important that we stop thinking about just economically disadvantaging us, but every student in a rural district who goes home at night and does not have the internet is at significant educational disadvantage to all of their peers. And I would think that that would be enough to move the state legislature to do something because yeah, yeah. since I've been on this board, they've been doing something and it's 12 years now. And so that's an entire generation of school children that don't have it in the rural no, that's an excellent point. I hear that, um, you know, from families that don't have that access. It impacts their, their education. That's a big. That's a big issue. And they don't have the ability to get back into town to use if there is a library or any public internet that's there. Mm -hmm. So they really are isolated. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yes, Andrew. I've got a question about emergency services. So, some of the more rural parts of the county struggle to have ambulance cert coverage uh, that's, you know, fast response and uh, can meet the needs of the communities. Um, you know, the, a lot of these are, are staffed by volunteer forces, obviously, and we also have, you know, private companies that are filling in some of the gaps. Uh, the ownership of one of those main companies has changed in, in, recent, year, in recent years. Um, so the county's sort of starting to think about if we can take a role in coordinating uh, that or assisting the communities in, in beefing up those services. I'm wondering if the state is exploring any, any ways of assisting either the communities or the counties in, in coordinating or financially supporting those services. That, that's, that's, a, that's a key issue uh, we hear about all the time. I know, uh, uh, you know a lot of these because with the lack of volunteers, the training requirements, all of that, that lead to that the decrease of, uh, of volunteers uh, has impacted a lot, a lot of communities. And uh, what uh, basically what we've been doing at the state level is uh, expanding the ability of uh, local emergency squads to uh, you know, bill insurance and Medicaid uh, for uh, providing services that they used to just provide for free. Uh, and in this, in this day and age, um, you know, that the volunteer model and providing free service uh, uh, just is not sustainable, as you point out. And so, uh, you know, I know this year there, 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 these uh, local uh, departments, um, emergency squads, 
and so on, uh, we'll, we'll be able to start billing insurance, which uh, hopefully will help them, you know, a bit financially, but also uh, uh, make sure that we continue to have this vital service uh, in, in various communities. And I, I don't know what, you know, obviously uh, your, a county role um, might be good to explore that, you know, with our with your emergency services office here in the county, um, because it's, it's it's a struggle out there yeah. for sure. Yes, will that Senator, will that include uh, fire departments, for example? Because as it stands right now, fire department owned ambulances are not. Yeah, that was the change that was made. Is uh, right. that they will now start to be able to bill, okay. rather than se separating the emergency squad from the fire department. Um, which uh, they, they that that's the change that's been made. Okay. Those are associated with the fire department. Fire department right, right, <clears throat> right. Well, I think uh, thank you very much for coming, sir. There'll be a lot of good questions. There are probably more, but I know you have a Great. service to get to. For yeah, I know your colleague, colleague who passed away, or a former colleague, and I'm going down to Newburgh next. But um, listen, I appreciate the chance to be here with all of you, uh, and uh, we should do this on a more regular basis for sure. And uh, uh, we uh, uh, consider it a great honor to uh, represent uh, the interests of this county and the others that I represent, you know, at the state capitol. I've got your back. Thank you very much. And we thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have another special presentation, Mr. Dagan. From planning department, please coming to uh, update us on lots of bags. Thank you. 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 So, this is also a state issue. The uh, future of plastic and paper bags in New York, in New York State and in Alcico County. So, in April, New York, State, New York State passed the Plastic Bag Waste Reduction Act. Um, so part of this, half of the bill was essentially a plastic bag ban. Um, that's the state portion and that's mandated. Uh, the other part of it is a city and county option on a paper bag fee, um, which will take effect in March. Both of these will take effect March 2020, no matter what decision the county makes. So this, for the plastic bag ban, there are some exceptions that I want to just go over before we get into it. Um, so you probably can't read this from there, but the easiest way to think about it is if you go into Walmart or whatever, the bag you check out with, that is banned. But everything else, you know, your meat bags or something you get fruit in, that's not banned. Restaurants still can use plastic bags. You can still buy garbage bags. Um, it's really just targeting the bags that you check out with, essentially. So how does the fee, thank you, how does the fee work? So it's a five cent, if the county decides to adopt it, it's a five cent fee for each paper bag, it's basically like a sales tax. Of the revenue collected, 40% of that revenue will be returned to the county. 60% goes to the state for the Environmental Protection Fund. Um, that money of that 40% collected, the county has to use that money to buy reusable cloth bags uh, to then distribute with a priority given to low and fixed income communities. Um, that's a picture of the bags we've been distributing. Um, so just to give you an idea of what it could look like, uh, a few people are exempt from this fee on paper bags, no matter what happens. People receiving SNAP, WIC, or any subsidiary program uh, will be exempt from the fee. So cities and counties both have this option. There's only one city in our county. Um, so basically, if the county decides not to have a fee, the city of Oneonta can. Both cannot implement the fee. Like, there's no 10 cent fee. So if the city decides to implement it before, if the city decides to implement it, they have their own fee. We can't then charge another five cents for paper bags on top of that. Um, are paper bags really a problem? So we ban plastic bags. It's taking it out of our waste stream. They're, they're a constant <coughs> contaminant in our recyclable stream. Um, but why do we want to deal with paper bags? Well, the reason is it takes a lot of energy to produce a paper bag. It takes about four times as much energy. Um, it also produces a higher concentration of to toxic chemicals and they weigh more, so it costs a lot more money to ship. It takes seven trucks to transport two million paper bags. 
versus just one truck to transport the same amount of plastic bags. And then if you add to that, you know, when people throw it out and they recycle it, it takes more trucks to get rid of it. So the expected increase in paper bags. So this is just a pure estimate. I don't want don't look at this map and assume this is what you can expect, but the average American family uses 1,500 single-use plastic bags every year. Um, so if you take the 2010 census, Otsego County had roughly 15,000 family households. That doesn't include the college population and transient renters. Um, so theoretically, if you take those family households, you multiply it by 15,000, 1,500, you get 22 and a half million plastic bags. If you take that figure and you multiply it by the two cents the county would receive, that's about an income of $450,000 a year. Um, that doesn't include the state portion, obviously. Um, and then if you say that, well, since we're going to charge a fee in this scenario, usage will probably go down. And using some other comparison, other cities around the country, you'd say maybe 40% reduction. Um, so that would give you $271,000 a year to buy reusable bags, distribute them, and then whatever is not used from that gets returned back to the state. So do fees work? Um, in general, do fees work? They do, they do work. So um, they do reduce overall demand for bags. Um, they're more effective than bonuses. It's more effective to tax someone than to give someone a rebate or something. Um, even a small initial impact um, in terms of a fee like this has a large social multiplier effect. Um, banning plastic bags without a fee has been shown in several instances to just raise the use of uh, paper bags because they're free if you don't put a fee on them. Um, the carbon footprint is lower um, when you reuse rather than when, you, when you're recycling. It's just because recycling takes, takes energy to transport, takes energy to recycle things, so reducing use or reusing things is better no matter what topic you're talking about. So, oh, sorry. I have a problem with calling it a tax. Okay. It's not a tax. Fee. You're buying something. Sure. It's not even a fee. It's you're you're buying something. Cost five cents. You get it back. When I when I buy a quart of milk, it's not a tax. It's you know it's I'm paying for that quart of milk. Same thing with bag. You know, Fair enough. using the word tax automatically puts you on a certain political side uh, regarding this and uh, it, it misinforms the public. My brothers. Well, I just wanted to say that part of the money has to go to the state and the other part has to go to the county government. So that does make it into a different category than buying other groceries. Just the point. So Meg was just telling me that, that that money that would go to the county has to be specifically used, it can only be used to buy recycled, recyclable bags. Reusable bags. Reusable yeah. bags. I, I'm just wondering, um, since we have Senator Seward still here today, uh, it, it seems like we should be advocating from a county perspective uh, for, for a little more flexibility around using that money for recycling programs. Our recycling costs are a huge issue for the county right now. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I seriously doubt that uh, we're going to, you know, I, I'm sure we can use that money on, on uh, reusable bags, but how many re reusable bags every bags. single year can oh, yeah. you buy? You know, so we, we, it would be in our best interest to start kind of, if we were going to take this action, to try to advocate early for uh, more flexibility in how that money would be spent because we have a huge gap with our recycling right now in terms of uh, the cost and 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 what are we doing with our recyclables? That's a great idea. That's a good point. I agree with what he said and also there any money that isn't used for that currently then goes back to the state. So we're implementing this program, we're collecting money, we're monitoring, we're spending all this money on a program, and it's, again, it's an unfair mandate that we have to provide this service, and any leftover money is going back to the state. We're not even getting the cost of actually running the program. So I, on that point, I'm still waiting for clarification. I, I did check to see if we get an administrative, because uh, that, that question was brought up, whether we get an administrative kickback. They haven't the kickback. Administrative so. <laughs> 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 Okay. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Ye
I guess the point I'd like to make is that if the, even if the EPF were to be funded, it doesn't necessarily preclude us from getting that money back to, you know, on Seagull County anyway. You know, that money can be used for a wide range of projects. You know, we just have to be aggressive in getting it. And I think having this program could help us bolster our, you know, you know. As long as we can get that money. Yeah, I think as long as we put pressure. One of the concerns that have been voiced over the reusable bags is the E. coli and salmonella contamination. Not familiar with that. Well, you put meat into a bag, it leaks. You use it again. It, it uh, sits in warm, unrefrigerated uh, conditions, and you take that bag back. You put chunk in cotton. Mm -hmm. I would just you can wash I would just ask us as representatives to not only have a concern about where the money is going, but also about what is the best thing we can do um, for the Correct. Let me just let me run down this now. Okay, I'm sorry we No, no problem. <laughs> so B7 implements in other, part of the, other parts of the country. This is not an exhaustive list. D.C., Chicago, L.A. County, um, they've all seen various, variable degrees of success implementing fees or mixed band fees. Um, Toronto is one example where it didn't really work out. They only saw 3.4% increase in reasonable bag use. And they basically attributed that to it was only effective for people that were already using reusable bags. Um, but it has worked in a lot of places. Hawaii has done it statewide. California has, I think, recently. Uh, this is not completely up to date. It's pretty close. This is as of June 6th. I think there's one more western county that can be added into this. But basically, the purple, the dark blue are have counties that decided they're not going to charge a fee already. They've taken action. The red counties, like Otsego, have not yet made up their minds. Again, that's not 100% accurate. Um, and then the light blue ones, so Ulster and the city of New York, have decided they are going to implement a fee. And yellow is just, uh, I'm not sure what they're doing. So, uh, Quick note on recycling costs. Um, just, I just added this slide in just to give people an idea. Um, I can skip past that because that's... It costs about $121 to recycle a ton of recyclables for the county. That's an average that changes a lot. Um, that's just for the six months of the 2019 year. Um, so if you take a, a paper bag, just to give an idea of what it costs to recycle, hypothetically one paper bag, um, you do the math, turn it into tons, multiply it out. It takes about half a penny to recycle a single paper bag. Again, this is totally an estimate, but just to give you an idea that it, it's not free to recycle. And there is both an environmental and a real financial cost to doing that. And then this is just showing you where I've been. So I've been doing outreach to different town boards. Um, I've been to Oneana, the County Fair, Lawrence, Butternut Valley Alliance, Harbor Town Board, Milford, Cooperstown. And then below that is where I'll be going in the future. So I've been asked to do outreach I'm doing it. Uh, and then here's some of the findings that I thought I'd bring to you from towns, what they've said. So Oneana, overall, very fav favorable. This is the environmental board. I haven't talked to the full common council. Um, but they're, all, they're very favor favorable of it. I had some questions. Um, Lawrence Town Board had a concern over concept of taxation. Um, and mostly a negative response. It viewed, it viewed it as an extra state uh, tax, if you want to use that word. Um, <laughs> Harwick Town Board uh, questioned whether businesses can have compostable bags. They wondered whether it was a size definition of a reusable bag. I also checked with DEC on that. Um, they don't know yet. They're waiting for clarification from wherever they wait for clarification from. Um, there's overall a negative reaction, and they viewed it as just a way to collect funds. Milford had a much more mixed response. Some people very favorable of it, some people not so much. Um, there was costs over the administrative costs of administering the fee and distributing the bags. Who does that? The county. Um, and there was, you know, a comment that eventually it's going to bring in less money because if people are just switch to reusables, you're not going to collect that much money every year. You know, that's the point. That's the that is the effect. Yeah. Cooperstown Village Board, uh, very positive response. They already considered banning plastic bags on their own, but decided against it. Um, and they're glad that it would be county-wide so that they don't have to compete with neighboring municipalities. 
Um, and there was some concern over low-income communities that don't qualify for SNAP or WIC that are in that zone of uh, where this could be a hardship. But, uh, and then just in conclusion, fees do work, you know, ideologically, whether it's a good idea or not. They do, they do work in, in terms of the objective studies show. Um, the plastic bag ban is final. There's nothing this board can do about that. Uh, but the paper bag fee is completely up to the county and the city of Oneonta. And just in general, recycling has a cost. It's better to reduce things, but that's it. So, What's the impact or the implications if we don't enact the fee? Uh, just, there just won't be a fee, and people can get paper bags for free. Basically. So then we got to deal with the cost of recycling. Yep. I think the... Andrew. Oh, go ahead, Danny. It, it, I'll, I'll wait. It's fine. Go ahead. Um, I just think that it's important for us to remember that, you know, the point of this legislation is to take waste out of the waste stream. Yes. To take stuff out of the recycling bin because that costs us money. So in addition to getting revenue to buy paper or reusable bags, we're also saving money on the back end, you know, from, you know, reduced tonnage from recycling. So we check that every month. So I'm sure that, you know, SWEP can monitor to see if there's any real savings associated with that. Shane, I was just wondering on uh, the kind of that uh, situation with the city of Oneonta being able to enact the fee and the county enacting the fee. If, um, if the county enacts the fee, the city, I assume, could go ahead and still enact it. Yeah. And with your calculations, did you include the city of Oneonta? You did not. Okay. But you, it's important to keep in mind that most of the businesses don't apply because all of Southside is in the town. Okay. Town of Oneonta. Yeah. So that wouldn't. And so town of Oneonta couldn't. In, in, right. They're not a city, so they couldn't. So there's actually very few businesses that actually really applies to right. in the city. But so really, the majority of restaurants the restaurants are exempt anyway. So you think think Dollar General. Yep. Got it. Basically, like that. Yeah. Okay. Just one last comment um, that came up, in, as you, Shane knows all the comments that I know because we were at the same meetings in Hartwick and Milford. But um, one of the concerns that the people raised was that the SNAP and WIC eligible patrons of the stores would still be receiving the paper bags at no cost. They would not. They would be exempt from having to pay five cents to get a paper bag. And these, both of these towns have a moderate amount of people who are in the low income group and there were still people saying they really, if it's going to be effective, then there should be no exemptions um, with income just because that's where we're putting, targeting those populations to give the bags to. Are they going to use the bags or are they going to continue on getting <coughs> free paper bags? So it just brought up another point to ponder. So I can't. We, I know we don't have any answers to that, but it's just a, a thought. I also think it's important to remember that whether or not we put a fee on the paper bags, paper bags still cost money, and they cost more for the grocery stores than plastic bags. Correct. That's what I've read. It's, so they're. I mean, the the stores are going to pass the cost on to the customers one way or another, um, and they're not. The grocery stores are not going to get a share of this fee or tax or whatever we're calling it, Gary. I don't know. So, <laughs> so I think it's financially in everyone's interest to make sure we're using less paper bags. I agree. And I think Michelle's point is well taken. We want to do what's best. And I think the program like this could help. It's, as always, it comes down to cost yeah. and administration. And how are we going to best do that? And I'll just add that. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, the, like the nickel deposit on cans or bottles does greatly reduce the trash and the got those out of the waste stream. This could work as well. It's just how are we going to administer it and make sure we pay for it. Can I add to that a little bit? I mean, I think we all agree that if we were to write this legislation ourselves, we would do it differently and could probably do a better job. No offense. But this is, this is the situation that we have. And so given that this is the, the, the terms of the deal, the question is, what is the best thing for this county? So that, that was the point I was trying to make. In Senator's defense, I don't think he wrote that. <laughs> I think all the bills that you've written have been great. <laughs>
I know SWEC is uh, obviously uh, addressing this issue, and I, I was just asking Meg briefly what the time frame is. I, I mean, I, I, I would think that we would want to make this decision soon. Um, and to be honest, I mean, it, it seems like it, would, it should be a decision we should make before the end of 2019, just to allow enough time for implementation in 2020. I, that's just, I'm just putting that out there for SWEC and, and uh, you know, I, I'm hopeful that uh, you know, we would be make, coming to a conclusion before year end. I would think that uh, we will make a decision in the next month or so that to move it forward or not. Move it on the other. But there has to be a full board vote. Oh, anyway. If I could just share, um, Kane's done a, a lot of outreach, and that's what we wanted to get the word out to people before we brought it through resolution. But our goal is to have it to you in November, before the end of the year, before a change of, of representation, and you're all educated on it so that we will be uh, bringing that resolution to you before the end of the year. Absolutely. In our stores, businesses that, like all these that have taken condition and they don't provide bags, so you can shop there. Is it just grocery stores or is it Lowe's, Home Depot, and everybody? Yeah. If you collect them. I think you touched on that early in the presentation. I can't imagine carrying some of the stuff that I have Lowe's. All right. Maybe it's this one. Well, they give you a paper bag. All right. It's everyone that's not this. So I can read it out to you if you want. Can I read it out? Yeah. Uncooked bags solely used to contain. Wrap uncooked meat, fish, or poultry. Bags used by customer to package bulk items. Bags used solely to contain food sliced or prepared to order. Bags used for newspaper delivery. Bags sold in bulk to customers. Trash bags, food storage bags, garments bags. Bags prepackaged for sale to customer. Plastic carryout bags provided by a restaurant, tavern, or similar food establishment to carry out or deliver food. Bags provided by a pharmacy to carry prescription drugs. So yeah, Lois, sure. Yeah, I had a question about the specific responsibilities of the county if we do go forward with this. So it's in terms of collection, it's not collected by the county, it's collected by the state, and then the money is returned to the county. Our responsibility would be to buy and distribute reusable bags. That's our so the, the store would collect the five cents mm -hmm. and they would give it to the county or they would give it to the state. Like a sales tax. And down the road they could say, well, like they're doing with uh, Wait, what? Hey, yep. We're not going to give you that. That's my understanding of it. That's my understanding. And that's why it's a tax. Because it's given, well, to, it's given to the government coffers. When you buy milk, it's not given to the government coffers. It's the right. it's it's store. This can be, and to pass this prologue, I, I don't think we Correct me if I'm wrong, Senator Seward, but that, that's my understanding of it, is that the state collects it, and then we get it reimbursed at least on the other. Yeah. That's somewhat helpful in the administration yeah. portion. Any other new questions or concerns about the Thank you, Shane. Right. Oh, yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Enjoyed your presentation multiple times. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It even makes sense. It'd be much more palatable. <laughs> much more palatable to me. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Okay, standing committee reports, public works, Representative Bill Brown. Good morning and thank you, uh, Cheryl Bliss. I'm going to start off my uh, report with our meeting. Our next meeting is September 17th at 1 p.m. In the second floor conference room. Um, and I'm also going to lead in, which I had at the end of my report, but I'm going to bring it up since it seems to be a topic of conversation, especially today, with recycling. Um, Jim uh, Denicamp, who's our deputy superintendent of highways, is, always, is going to be attending a seminar 
September 24th in Newark, New Jersey, called Zero Waste. It's a Zero Waste Conference. Uh, he will be meeting with a gentleman by the name of Toby McCartney, who I've reached out to and been in discussions with. And their company has a way of utilizing plastic waste back into road emulsions. Um, He's given me some information as far as the process, which is uh, what we call IP, an intellectual property that they possess. Uh, but it was intriguing me enough to, to know that we have issues uh, with our solid waste, with recycling. Uh, one of the biggest advantages that I could see with this is that the plastics that we have uh, and have tried to recycle are or tend to be uh, contaminated. We've, we've heard some, you know, uh, contaminations about E. coli, Salmonella, uh, Campylobacter, and other nasty bugs out there. This process, it doesn't matter. Uh, the product is taken, uh, from what I understand, is, is processed and then used instead of vitriol in road emulsion. So there's enough interest there, there's enough um, potential there that I'd like to um, look at that. So Jim is going to go down. I would have uh, attended, but we have uh, some other meetings that day, admin being the most important that uh, I, I need to be to. So I look forward to hearing back from him. And uh, Toby has offered also to do a video conference jointly with Public Works and with Solid Waste at uh, an agreeable date. So we'll see where it goes. But it's uh, it's interesting, you know, kind of moving forward. So at our last meeting, uh, which was August 19th, uh, we had Carol McGovern come in. We uh, reviewed and, and uh, looked at the 2020 budget. Uh, for Central Telephone and Central Mail. Uh, we worked through uh, some of the questions that uh, came up with Brian Picorni, um, with budgetary concerns in upgrading the Central Telephone system. Uh, we have looked at uh, some projected costs, um, and nothing really kind of set off any warning bells with what we were looking at as far as the, uh, the budget uh, for Central. Uh, telephone, although we did uh, also kind of agree that that should start to come up under um, IT with, uh, with uh, Brian and uh, his department. We had Sheriff Devlin who came in who also uh, requested that we approve some scrap for some vehicles, which we did. Uh, those will be sent off. Um, I was able to go down and uh, actually tour the renovations at the jail and one of the things that came to our attention was some security glass panels for windows uh, that weren't uh, initially covered under the scope of the work and uh, they would need to be replaced so Public Works approved that moving forward. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to be uh, interesting moving forward for local municipalities is uh, we at Public Works had been and jointly with the PSLA actually, had been uh, asked to look at repatriating some of the vehicles potentially that would come out of um, the uh, Sheriff's Department. And um, we were approached originally uh, by a fire department that was interested in repatriating one of those vehicles. Um, both Public Safety and Public Works thought that uh, it made sense in certain instances to look at that, so which we did. We've approved uh, some of those moving forward, and uh, Representative Farwell actually brought up that this should be uh, probably funneled through and explained through the uh, advisory board, um, which meets and um, kind of a you know that's to get the word out, and we will be moving forward. So when vehicles are uh, brought to our attention and can be surplused out. Uh, a list will be generated and departments are encouraged to um, give us a explanation as to potentially what these vehicles could be used for in their districts. Uh, we had uh, Eve Basulis uh, come to us to create fund and fill a, a, a temporary maintenance position, uh, which we, we moved to approve. We got some updates from um, building uh, maintenance um, on the 
some issues that were there. One was an emergency issue where we had a pump out at the uh, public safety, over, over by the public safety building that supplied water that uh, actually burned down. So we uh, deemed that an emergency, as I'm sure everyone would agree. And we have uh, started the repairs on that. Um, we had uh, uh, Treasurer Andrew Christman come in and he had uh, spoken to Public Works about uh, getting back to the Clifton Street property. Uh, we discussed it under Public Works, some uh, various considerations, and then we moved to uh, put it out for uh, using absolute auctions. And we do have a minimum bid uh, in mind, and uh, so we will go on online. So I encourage anybody that's looking for uh, a building uh, of what I call great uh, potential to uh, reach out there and uh, look at the uh, absolute auctions. Uh, Rich Brimmer and, and uh, uh, Jordan Clemens came to Public Works. Jordan uh, gave us the Forest Street report, and um, we had some some new uh, ash sales. I wanted to enunciate that correctly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, we received uh, no bidders for, for our first uh, um, price for board foot as we had put out, so that will be going out again. We're going to resubmit that. And uh, actually, our, our country, our county forester has really been doing a great job establishing some of the boundaries uh, that have long been um, undefined. So uh, I give him a lot of kudos. He's, he's been doing a great job for us. Well, we approved some contracts uh, under uh, highway, uh, propane, diesel fuel, things of that nature moving forward. Um, we, uh, we discussed uh, with Rich uh, Bremer the uh, proposed fleet replacement plans. And this is just good planning. I mean, trying to look at what we have, um, how long it'll be in service, and uh, when things need to go out of service so we as the county would realize uh, probably the best return on our investment uh, for those um, pieces of equipment. So uh, Rich has really uh, gone to uh, you know pen and paper, so to speak, and is putting together in, in scope you know what we would need, and that'll help us prioritize us you know moving forward as funds that would be needed accordingly for that. Um, Rich updated us as the uh, paving uh, collaboration on the Roundhouse Road in Oneana. Um, and if any of you have ever driven that before and after, I can say we, it, it, is, um, it is actually a pleasure now to drive uh, down there. I went and visited that and uh, uh, job well done there. We had uh, discussed some, some various ways of potentially increasing some of our revenue. Uh, we were talking about funding, uh, funds versus taxes, uh, things of that nature, but um, really there, there needs to be another potential revenue stream moving forward that addresses strictly road and road conditions and road paving. Um, so Public Works has really delved into um, uh, that discussion uh, and, and I think uh, we'll come up with some recommendations moving forward. Um, Rich informed us uh, fall safety days will be scheduled for Wednesday, October 9th, 2019. Uh, I will be there cooking, so if you would like some culinary masterpiece uh, performed by a county employee, by all means, come down. How could I resist? You can, you can be actually served by, by a county employee. Uh, we did, uh, there, there's some, some housekeeping things. We did receive a yellow flag on a uh, bridge. Uh, where is this? This was uh, Department of Senior Real Med. Uh, oh, County Highway 14. And uh, we are dealing with uh, um, that moving forward, uh, requiring uh, what we need to be done. Uh, we've done some culvert replacements on County Highway 8. Um, a larger uh, diameter one on County Highway 35 near the intersection of 42. I crossed that this morning actually and it was, uh, uh, again, job well done. Uh, we've done some chip sealing on County Highway 18. Uh, the Gilbertsville salt shed uh, milling of the parking lot was completed and we're moving to pave that. 
the issue at County Route 54 um, with the uh, uh, up by the school, uh, the paperwork has been sent to DOT and we're looking for approval moving forward for uh, redesigning and, and uh, improving, uh, I believe it would be sight lines there at, at County Route 54. Again, some other bridges, they seem to be all kind of gathering up at once. We've had some other bridge uh, repair. Uh, working on some shoulders. Uh, we've uh, completed some of the greater shimming on County Highways 45, 11, 33, 42, 43, 24, 25, 50, 22, 26, 27, 1, and 3. Kind of an impressive, uh, if you really think about it, number of uh, county roads that we have been working on. We did repair a, uh, another culvert uh, on County Highway 22. Uh, hopefully that one will get us some more years. Um, I won't bore you with any of the other county highways that we've really been working on, but needless to say, our, our guys are out there. They are mowing, they are maintaining, they are fixing, they are, uh, well, we're not painting, we're having the, the painting done. In fact, uh, uh, the road painting is almost all complete with edge lines and over half of the center lines of uh, our highway. Uh, and then lastly, we had, um, from emer emergency services, we had, had Art Klinger come in and we did approve a surplus vehicle uh, that he uh, uh, suggested that we do. Um, and in as uh, concise manner as possible, that kind of gives everyone the updates. I did give you the date, which I normally forget to do at the beginning of my talk. If there's any questions and or concerns, I'd be willing to address them. Thank you. Um, uh, given that we seem to be putting properties up for auction uh, outside of the, uh, the, the the August tax auction, you know, the odds and ends of things that come up and are very unusual in each each one in, uh, in its uh, individualization. Um, maybe we could uh, provide our department heads with information about those properties before we put them up for auction, so we don't end up having bids and then take it up off the. Uh, the uh, Gary, thank you. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean, housing is a real issue in the county, and suddenly there are some some real initiatives that are that are uh, being developed that, that might uh, address that. And so let's go to them first before we put it off. So to, to further uh, build on that, which what Representative Kruvik is, is uh, alluding to, is that we had um, uh, put out for bid a. Uh, Property on Rose Roses Ave. Rose. Rose. <laughs> it's Roses Hill. Yeah, Rose. I, 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 when, I, when I get into Roses, I get nervous. So uh, Rose Ave. And um, so the bid went in. We, we we received the bid in Public Works just prior to the opening of that bid. It was commu communicated to Public Works that there were some. I'll use the word internal customers that were interested in potentially. Uh, that piece of property and what it could offer the county. Um, so DSS was one and Otsego now was the other. We opened the bid, we did not accept nor reject the bid at this time, giving time for DSS and Otsego now to come back to, hopefully on the, on the 17th, with a plan in place to explain what could it be used for and would it better serve the county in that capacity? Um, at which time I will ask Public Works to to uh, set a course moving forward. But thank you for that, Gary. Yes, you, you are right. We should uh, we should be a little bit. It always comes out of communication. The um, public safety. Did we ever determine whether that was a lightning strike? So the uh, company that came could not determine that it was a, a lightning strike. Um, it, uh, I won't say it was forensically gone over, but to the best of their abilities, uh, they could not determine. They felt that if there was a lightning strike that was uh, strong enough to actually burn the pump out, it would have burned out other uh, electronics along, and the other electronics were fine. So that was kind of how okay. how it, how it uh, sh you know, shook out, so to speak. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Thank you, Representative Oberon. IGA, Representative Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we met on August 13th, and uh, Lori and Mike from the Board of Elections came in, and we did get a kind of a in-service on what e-poll books are and 
how on-demand printers work and how the whole process of early voting uh, goes forth and how it will be uh, happening in Otsego County this uh, coming fall. Um, it does begin 10 days ahead of Election Day. It does happen over the weekend. Uh, you just, and it will be happening down at the Meadows in Classroom A, but the day before, the Monday before Election Day is not an early voting day. So the nine days previous to that, there will be early voting going on. The Monday, no voting, and then the Tuesday would be regular voting at all the polling places around the county. Um, but the way that an electronic poll book works is at the polling place, the person signs like they, you normally do, and it is electronically transmitted into a master list of polling of uh, registered voters, and then if that person were to go to their town on election day, it would ideally, it would register that they had actually already voted, early voting. So it's a process we're learning about and um, more uh, to come as more and more, you know, as we get more on-demand printers and the process becomes more modernized throughout the county. Um, we did uh, approve to have voting material, the e-poll books and the on-demand printers, purchased through grant money that New York State is providing. Uh, there was a, a word that that funding was being cut, but that funding has all been restored. So we approved this morning at a second IGA, a third IGA meeting, I should say, to uh, finalize that contract for the Board of Elections for e-poll books and other voting equipment. So we're moving ahead on that. Uh, planning and transportation, we're getting two new buses. We, uh, there was a, it was necessary to modify the contract with leather stocking trolley to have a bus monitors on Hall of Fame weekend, <coughs> something that we overlooked in the negotiating process and it became very clear that this was a need on that very crowded weekend with a lot of trolley traffic and a lot of riders and riders <coughs> has been uh, up on the trolley and over that weekend they have monitors to do ticket sales ahead outside of you know getting on or to work in the crowd and, and sell tickets for the trolley to expedite the whole process of riding the trolley in a very crowded weekend. Um, so we did approve to ad add money into the contract to pay for those monitors. Uh, we set the public hearing for the agency housing public hearing that we had this morning and Eric Scribner gave an update on the project and the update is in the IGA minutes so if you want you can reference those and see how we're doing. Um, it's moving along on pace. Uh, we went over budgets for planning and transportation, weights and measures, and Jody Zagrewski from Otsego Now reported to the committee on the $75,000 that this county had put into as an allocation into his budget, and that complete report is also in the reported minutes. Um, our next working IGA committee meeting is September 10th at 9 a.m. We also had our second IGA governance meeting. Uh, the results of that, that was a very interesting meeting. We uh, went back into county history and uh, found a 1993 local law to create the position of a county manager. Um, that was, I have to admit, I did not do that by myself. Carol helped me. And I also have to admit that it wasn't my idea. I was given a tip from a former county board member. So um, that's how we got on to that. And we sent that out to the board to be uh, studied and looked at a timeline for creating that position um, in the county is included in that email. Um, and we also allocated $75,000 uh, to go towards expenses relating to a county administrator for 2020 at that same meeting. And that has gone towards the budget. It's with the budget officer at this time. Um, 
The next governance meeting is uh, the 24th, September 24th at 9 a.m. Um, on a related note, uh, NISAC would like to come back and do another presentation with us. We invited them months ago to come back. Steve Aquario is, uh, has worked out a date October 29th at 10 a.m. to come back with uh, some visitors from Saratoga County, uh, their director of economic development and another person who I'm not thinking of right now, but uh, also of interest for us as we um, move ahead with men on many fronts in the county. So that is October 29th at 10. We have governance on September 24th at 9. And we have the, our regular meeting on September 10th at 9. If anyone has any questions. Yeah. I'd just like to emphasize uh, what you were talking about about the county manager. Um, this is momentous. We have a timeline. Uh, I, I, that is a very, very big deal, that we have a timeline that is uh, uh, focused on uh, December. Is that when we're thinking maybe we are uh, want to have the local law ready? Um, which uh, means the clock's ticking. And we need to be thinking about this. We need to be reading the documents and talking among each other uh, uh, and, and, and really starting the debate and coming to meetings so that we can. Uh, this is maybe, you know, this is certainly going to be the biggest thing I've done in my career, or been part of, you know, this ma major change. So it's, it's not, you know, one more thing. And I would, again, uh, and, and, uh, I would uh, encourage all of us to be involved in that debate as we move forward. Okay. Uh, to that end, I think. Meetings on this should be held after the board meetings that all board members are already here to attend to discuss it because I don't think a lot of people have been involved in the discussion back and forth. I mean, I, I attended one last time. Also, I wanted to know uh, $75,000 was put into the budget under what line and what are we intending for that to cover because it would be a fraction of the cost. Right. So we're half, a, half, a, half a year's expenses to with fringe of, say, $100,000 salary, $50,000 fringe, divided by two. And um, we put it in as county administrator, and that's, I think, where it is right now. And no clerical Andrew. staff to help them or to do anything. We are working it out as we go, as we discussed in the meetings. And I would just like to say that we, this is our uh, well into 18 meetings held on the topic, and they're fairly regularly scheduled for the last Tuesday of every month. So I have. Uh, I feel that we've had a lot of time available just to speak to that piece of it. I do, but they're scheduled at the convenience of that committee and not not the rest of the people who have businesses or that are that are running. So I think if a committee of the whole met and just the board members, you know, it doesn't have to include all the other stuff that's going on at this meeting for an update on it. Thank you. Yeah, that's, you it's an important decision, and it'll be a couple hundred thousand dollar position. Oh, we are going to have a presentation in November uh, for <coughs> to update the county, the entire board of our, you know, as a encapsulated form of our year, almost two year discussion that we've been carrying forward. So we will have that. Um, if I, I'm just, I'm trying to put my head around sitting down and having another meeting after this meeting is over. Um, just, I, I am not dismissing the idea, Kathy, and I will try to find a time that the committee, as, that the board as a whole could meet, and we will discuss that and hopefully be able to set something up. Um, your point is well made that we're all here, and why not do it then? There are other reasons why we might not want to, but like, for example, I want to get over to Delhi by the end of the day today so to finish my market over there. So, I mean, there's business going on every day that we're skipping. Right. Or meet before it. Right. You know, okay. I mean, but people do set this day aside. I think it's a very important vote, and, and people should have all the information. Agreed. Okay. 
I, you know, I was just going to say from from budget committee, I think Andrew had actually um, allocated separate fringe at the time. Right. So I we I, talked about it. Okay. So yeah. yeah so we, we made that correction. Yeah. Okay. Great. So it's more than seventy five thousand. No. It's no. seventy five thousand people covered yep. salary and fringe. Correct. Correct. And then just as an FYI, since if, if so we're all having as much information as we can, the vote in 1993, so we've been discussing this for a long time, so the vote in 1993 was um, 7 to 7, but with a weighted majority of nay. And bipartisan participation yeah. in on both sides, or at least on the other <coughs> side. Um, not quite sure about where everyone else lined up, but we did send it. Um, we did do our, our research. It was interesting. Any other Thank questions? Thank you. Human Services, Representative Cotney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My minutes are on my printer tray at home. <laughs> I've done that before. Um, but uh, so I'll do my best here on uh, online. Um, uh, at the beginning of our meeting, which was on um, uh, August 19th, we uh, voted to uh, extend the uh, uh, reappoint, sorry, reappoint Eve as the commissioner of uh, social services. Her uh, term was ending, and um, and so we uh, ask your support for that uh, resolution today. We uh, we actually talked a lot about credit cards. Um, we have a credit card uh, policy uh, that DSS has been following, which says you may use the credit card for this, 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 and this. And you know those kinds of policies don't work because there's always one more thing that it's really perfectly appropriate to, but it's not on that list, so you can't use it. So we've asked DSS to write one that seems to work. Uh, uh, this, uh, the one we're talking about was written like 15 years ago, so uh, we're working, working on that. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we did our, our fiscal um, uh, view and uh, fiscal the uh, fiscal uh, situation is good. Uh, we uh, approved some um, uh, filling of, of vacancies uh, as usual. As usual, um, the uh, there are two tiny homes. We had the, had the uh, public hearing this morning, uh, but there are two tiny homes on uh, on site. And uh, feel free to wander out to the back of the Meadows building and take a look at them. Um, the uh, 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 the uh, community center is uh, in process, uh, which is completely grant funded. The um, uh, geo, uh, geothermal uh, project is uh, on its way, uh, completely grant funded, so uh, that's good. We, uh, we are obviously planning for, for more. Um, Working on, obviously DSS uh, uh, uses most of the enterprise vehicles, most of the vehicles used, uh, you know, maybe outside of highway, but, um, uh, and uh, we just, we, t we talked for uh, quite some time about um, whether, when it was uh, going to be fiscally appropriate uh, to turn in some of the cars, uh, and maybe we need to change uh, the, some of the decisions we made in a minor way um, to, to save some money. Um, and uh, then we spent time on the budget. We spent two months uh, in DSS every year on the budget. Uh, we did some preliminary work on it uh, uh, the, for this meeting, uh, looking at, uh, at things in general uh, and uh, with a lot of blank spaces because it's not uh, all decided yet. And um, next month we will look at it in a lot more detail. DSS has uh, big chunks of money that aren't, that uh, uh, big, big numbers in the budget that can't be uh, applied until the, um, the the year is almost over because they really don't have that information from the state just because of the way the state reimburses uh, them in uh, lots of different ways depending on the program. So um, our budget is usually in flux until uh, November or, uh, when we finally have to uh, make the best guesses we can. But we do work for uh, two months on it in, in, um, in committee. Um, Next month we will uh, meet uh, on the 18th. I'm oh, sorry, this month uh, on the 18th, September 18th at 
uh, up on the third floor, um, as usual, here in this building. Any questions? Hearing none, we will move on to PSLA, Representative Frazier. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we met on August 15th. Um, Dean Fowler from the Child Advocacy Center discussed training requests and she asked for approval of several contracts that will the department. These are resolutions 224, 225, and 226 today. Um, we discussed the history of the CAC, how to improve it going forward, and what staff she may need. Uh, as Representative uh, uh, Overacker spoke about surplus sheriff vehicles, uh, Chief Nesky of the Skinnegan's Fire Department came in and, and requested one of the surplus vehicles. We have directed him to go to the Public Works Committee and talk while we we're in favor of it. We really need to come from Public Works for the surplus vehicle. Uh, Tony Gentile from Collins informed us of a mistake in his budget lines reflecting a position that wasn't funded in his 2020 budget. Uh, we believe that's been corrected. He also shared with us his views on the New York State Senate's uh, comments on a fire prevention building code enforcement. Um, if you haven't had a chance to read um, Tony's crib notes he sent to everybody, uh, please take that time. I encourage you to do so. Our clear from PMS asked for approval of several purchases. He reviewed the induction weekend after action report with us, and then he discussed the failed RFP on the emergency training center. Uh, we discussed at length again how we can help facilitate uh, delivery of EMS services throughout the county. Um, not there yet. More, more. Um, as previously stated, Dan Ong from probation reviewed the budget with us and he explained that due to some of the new legislation enacted, he will be requesting new positions uh, in the 2020 budget. Um, the public defender through Chris and Stevens requested training. Um, Mike Trossett um, came before us this morning. We approved um, a contract of 168000 That is uh, resolution 234 today. That is to help fund the cap. Um, this is the first round of funding. He says that tomorrow he has a meeting to discuss the second round of funding. So we'll be applying for that. Um, Sheriff Devlin asked permission to purchase a new trailer for educational purposes, uh, stop DWI, and a couple other uses for that trailer. Um, the sheriff informed the committee that the jail population has been dropped due to the construction. We are currently boarding out inmates and there will be costs associated with that. Um, we budgeted some in anticipation of this. Um, we may exceed that. We'll, we'll, we'll know until we're done, I guess. So. Um, the sheriff also asked to evaluate the existing jail and discuss the future of the public safety building. Um, we'll be discussing that and the timeline as far as when we should be having that. Uh, very important conversation. The sheriff will be requesting additional personnel in 2020. Uh, we discussed surplus vehicles and the liability of handing them over to fire departments with them. Uh, the 901 advisory board, as well as the fire advisory board, will be meeting um, on September 19th. The 901 advisory board will be 10, 10 a.m. in the morning, and the fire advisory board will be 7 o'clock that night. Both of them will be at the Meadows. Um, our next meeting is September 13th at 1 p.m. I'll answer any questions. Any questions? Yeah, um, that state report on, on codes generally was pretty grim. Um, and I'm wondering whether Tony had anything to say about how that related, how that compared to what how we're doing here. Um, we did get deep in that. We didn't really ask a lot of opinion. I think he is generally um, in agreement with it. That the funding isn't there and to do so. And if you that um, report, you find out there was a time where the state gave the county money to help fund the program. 
since I've been on the board, codes have taken a big hit. Over the last couple of years, we've filled it back up. But Tony has asked multiple times, should the code office operate in the files? The services we provide, and we have put pressure on that office forming the blind, and actually that's a legitimate question that should be operating in the black. Should we be funding that instead of it operating on the city? Yeah. So. Quite a few years ago, someone came down from the state to talk about fees and stuff in our code and actually recommended higher increases than we put in. But ultimately, I believe if the town abdicates their responsibility to do code enforcement, it really is the responsibility of the state, which is probably at the time why they were funding it to encourage counties to do it. And now, as with everything else, that they've got us doing it, they don't give us any money to do it. But it really still reverts back to them, and they should be funding what's necessary to do the job then, because otherwise they're people. <coughs> it, actually, it actually goes back to the county first, by the way. I saw what the guy from the state said, like, probably five years ago. He said only you county people are responsible for the county. If the county opts out, then it goes to the state. Okay, so <coughs> if we opted out of it, they have to do it. So we should incentivize them to cover it. It's better at the local level to, to support it because we certainly don't have the unlimited funds that they do. Nicolana. And, and one of the problems with that report as far as enforcement goes that they kind of didn't cover is that there are two ways of doing enforcement as far as housing and things of that nature. You either you have to do it one of two ways. Either you do it by complaint. In other words, you have to receive a written complaint on the property before you do it blanket across the town. The problem with doing it blanket is that it takes a lot of resources to do that. And it's also very politically unpopular. If you don't do it one of two ways, if you do it just random, then you end up with um, issues of selective enforcement. Well, and also another way to generate the money to do it effectively is to proportionally, since it is the town's responsibility to charge the town. And then, uh, and then because if you over start, a third of what we do is right in this. And then if you start, I hate to use this word, but that's effectively what you're doing, is you start condemning or declaring occupancies as unfit, then it opens up a whole other can of worms of what do you do with the people that now are displaced from that. That, that report's kind of narrow. By design, no doubt. I have a separate question, and I, I may add, I, I just am looking at resolution number 234, and I was just reading through it, and one of some of, one of the whereas's seems um, to not make sense to me, but that could just be me. It just says, whereas additional legislation passed in 2019 requires that implementation be accomplished by January 1st, 2019. And it just seemed like that was awkward to me. You know what, that, that was my error, 2020. Oh, oh okay. Just. Great, thank you, Ed. <laughs> I have clarity on that. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, Health and Ed, Representative Stanley. Thank you, Chairman Bliss. Uh, Health and Ed met on August 12th. Uh, we had a very finance budget heavy meeting, lots of discussions. Uh, Terry Knapp discussed a variety of uh, questions and concerns with us um, regarding uh, financial issues uh, having to do with indigent uh, students, uh, various coroner's fees, um, up, possibly updating the rates the county pays to local funeral homes for services, a number of different and interlocking issues. Uh, we also reviewed the coroner's budget for 2020 uh, with Carolyn McGovern, who was there. Um, Carol also presented to us, uh, spoke with us about updated Cornell Cooperative Extension contract that was approved in the previous board meeting. 
Um, just working out the language having to do with that. Uh, Don Smyers and Cornell uh, discussed his uh, proposed 2020 budget request. Um, so kind of the initial stages of that discussion. Tammy McDonald from the Office for the Aging uh, also discussed her budget with us. Um, we looked at specific budget items, um, no major changes in the department budget from last year. Um, Tammy provided an update on the senior picnic held in July. Uh, the event was very successful. Um, she updated the committee on the Trinity Services Senior Meal Program and the interactions between the senior meals and, and the jail, uh, the needs of the jail. Um, Sue Matt from Community Services spoke with us again about her 2020 budget as well. We went over that closely. Uh, we reviewed revenue from July. Um, Sue informed us that the, uh, the department has received about $50,000 in paid performance for the first two quarters. Um, she requested and the committee approved uh, moving 23,288 from contingents to uh, pay for criminal actions. So that's again something that we've been dealing with again this year. Um, Sue Matt also provided uh, some program updates. Um, the System of Care has approved a new logo. There will be a presentation on System of Care on November 14th at Fox Care in Odeonta. I'll remind you of that next month too. Um, peer Services Program in the jail is going well. We again discussed 242 Main Street, Sue Matt's, um, and uh, her budget. Heidi Bond from the Department of Health um, made some requests, including uh, the purchase of four desks, which we approved. Uh, request to fill a vacant funded account clerk typist position, effective uh, this month. We approved that as well. Um, and we again went over Heidi's budget with her closely and discussed uh, questions and concerns. That was about it. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for September 9th, this Monday at 9 a.m. at the Meadows. Happy to answer any questions. Um, sorry, what was that meeting? Uh, the 9th, Monday. Thank you. Any questions for the chair? Uh, Sweat, Representative McCarty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we met on August 20th. Uh, Bailey Kano from uh, Assistant Environmental Planner for OCCA was in and did a presentation on the Butternut Water Protection Plan. Uh, all that information is in your minutes. Uh, the grant money they received to, to do the program. At the end, uh, she closed the presentation by asking the Board of Representatives to endorse the Butternut Watershed Protection Plan Steering Committee and to appoint four Board of Representatives to the Steering Committee. Uh, that's something maybe you could do. Uh, Karen Sullivan requested Lee O'Brien from uh, Solid Waste. Uh, we, uh, with a permit that we thought we had for the Northern Trench for a site to extend the hours, uh, got uh, screwed up a little bit, I guess. Uh, Casella re-permitted the Northern Transfer site and apparently DEC was not happy with it. And so uh, we had to go back to the three days instead of five days temporary until the report or the permit comes through from DEC to have it open for the five days. So that should be coming right along, I would think, in the next few weeks. If I could just add to that, that was only for commercial haulers. So they have been stationed Tuesday and Thursdays collecting recyclables and bad garbage from the residents. Uh, Shane uh, Diggin was reported on a voluntary food waste collection plan to start at the <coughs> transfer stations. These will be containers available at each site for the residents to put their food waste in. Items not accepted in the food waste include meat, bones, paper, and other items. 
uh, he said he would prepare a educational flyer regarding what are acceptable materials and what are not, and uh, try to educate people what they can bring. Uh, reported that uh, due to to Karen report due to the changes in the D New York State DEC municipalities will no longer have access to a 50% grant reimbursement for costs associated with recycled e-waste. The committee did discuss and the volume costs associated with recyclables e-waste and uh, I made the resolution that or motion to uh, charge $10 per unit for CRTs and other televisions or computer monitor screens and a five dollar per fee on all of, all other acceptable e-waste items uh, we have to recover that cost somehow we're also reported and noted that the e-waste will be taken at, for free this year in household hazardous waste days scheduled for december 20th and 21st september September 21. And uh, so if you have something you want to get rid of or nothing, now that's the <laughs> uh, We also went over the budget quite lengthily. Uh, Aaron presented three options. Uh, one was to raise the tip fee, one was to raise the user fee, and the other one was get out the garbage. No. <laughs> uh, so we're still working on that, and uh, we'll be discussing that in length next month. And we meet September 23rd at 9 o'clock at Meadows. Hi, uh, Keith or Karen. I just wondered when that e-waste fee, would that be instituted January 1st? Is that the idea behind that? Well, we've talked about that, and right now it's costing us money roughly anywhere between ten and twelve thousand a month. So we would like to implement it. We're looking at starting in possibly October, but November could be the latest. We do have to, I believe, and I had sent Ellen an email to ask if I need to amend the contracts. We have our fees in there, so um, we're waiting to get that clarified but it'll probably happen before the end of the year and then extend into the budget shows revenue coming back for e-waste collection for next year I guess if anybody has any suggestions how we what you want to do as far as raise tipping fee or user fee or any other fees that and I sent some emails, let us know. But uh, we were talking about raising the tip fee. Uh, in the contract, it goes to 82. $82.16. And we were talking sure. about, it was suggested that we raise it to 85 and leave the user fee what it is and, and go that way. But uh, we're over for suggestions. Well, I would agree with that. It captures the money from the people who are actually using the service to raise the tip fee. And the tip fee is still going to be lower than surrounding areas. Right. But significant. And also, I think we ought to raise the out of county part of it, too. Yes. Uh, the other option, we have different variables of this budget. So we have a chance to uh, set the user fee, which is now $20 a unit. We have the um, uh, setting the user fee or the tip fee, which is now 80, uh, it will be going. Our charge to Casella next year will be 82 to 16. Casella's charge to the county. We also are charging $55 a ton for commercial haulers to bring recyclables to the transfer stations, and that's a fee that the county set. Um, and then we have <coughs> e waste. Uh, fees that we're going to implement. So there's a lot of variables that we can play with in different scenarios. Um, and that's, I wanted to give, I started out with just the baseline. Uh, this is what the tip fee is going to be next year for us. This is what our option, if we keep it at 80, uh, that would cost us roughly $80,000. So we play with those variables back and forth to see what the best approach is. Right now, we, our focus is to reduce the county share of that cost. And yes, um, increasing the tip fee is an option for us to, to uh, consider. I just also wanted to mention no, that we're 
we're going to be taking cardboard. Oh. Uh, we're separating, not removing it, but we're separating the cardboard from the recycling stream because we have communicated with um, Otsego Auto Crushers to take our material at this point for nothing, but it could go to $10 a ton, which would save us um, uh, roughly $100 processing fee that we're paying right now. So $100 per ton. So that is going to be implemented as soon as those, the containers are placed. We're going to just voluntarily, with the uh, people, the attendants that are there, move the cardboard into a separate container, try to keep it as clean as possible, and avoid that cost at the processing plant. Do you know offhand what the um, other counties, surrounding counties, their tip fees are? I, for next year, no, but I do know Schoharie County is charging $120 a ton for recyclables right now. Um, but that is something we're looking at. We are one of the lower prices. We have been. Uh, Oneida Herkimer, I think, is around 90. <coughs> we're up in um, Tompkins County, and they're around 92 a ton. So um, we are lower than most. Once again, that is capturing the people that are actually bringing the product there. So user fee hits everybody, whether they use it. Right. So to Kathy's point, we have to pay to to deal with our garbage. And so the question for us is, do we have people pay that in their taxes? Do we have people pay that in a user fee? Or do we have them pay, pay it from with the tipping fee? And the tipping fee would be the most direct. So the more garbage you create, the more you pay. Now one thing is I want to make sure how much, it, if we do raise that, how much does that increase the bag amount that a person takes to the transfer station? Mm -hmm. it, the bags are weighed by tons. So even though they charge $4 a bag, when they go to haul it, it all calculated out by tons. So that goes back into the weight stream, but we get the, the $4 goes to offset that. Yeah, but I mean, Casella pays that to us, don't they? No, not anyone. We used to get a dollar for every bag. But don't they have to pay to dump their garbage, Casella? Casella does, yeah. So if they're charging, I mean, $4 a bag, 20 bags, does not weigh a ton, they, I mean, I don't want them to turn around and say, you know, to make up this $85 tipping fee, we gotta charge, 50 cents another bag to, to have their profit range. That's... I don't, that, w that would be an amendment to our contract? Is that okay, so the, it's contract? in the contract and it stays the price per bag right through? The, the price per bag in the contract can now okay. is $4 per bag. And the only change is the, the charge per ton each year. Okay. Right. Some questions? Garbage. I guess a comment on the cardboard recycling. That's great that we got that market. Real quick. Thank you for finding Well, for now we do. And then um, the other issue is glass. And we attended a DEC um, conference uh, last week. And DEC is looking for suggestions of what to do with glass. And we have continued to say if we impose. Uh, increase a bottle bill to include wine bottles and liquor bottles that would take a weight a lot of the weight out of our recycling bin. I um, there are some municipalities that are no longer accepting glass in their recycling and um, I hate to see that happen there's other communities that are crushing some of it to be used in road surface but you have to again have the market for someone to take that material and use it um, we did put an application in for a um, crusher, a glass crusher, with DEC. We haven't heard whether we have received that funding or not. Um, so I look at it as the plastics are an issue, but the glass is my heaviest weight, and we're paying by the ton. So um, we are talking with DEC, we're going to the meetings, and no one really has a solution at this point. No, uh, along with the business to the north things. I'm sorry? And Della? And that's what I was going to ask. Is Indella? In, in Della? yes, we are in communication with Indella. I have been for um, quite some time now. Uh, the point we have to consider, what you have to consider is, and I said we canvassed a few of the local businesses in the northern part of the county to say, if you separate your glass, you can take it to Andella. She's willing to take it. 
transporting is getting it there, okay? Um, I just followed up with them because we had talked to Otisaga, we had talked to Oma Gang, and they were right on board and then nothing happened. So we're following up and through that. Cynthia can only take so much glass, and I've heard both she'll take it all, and then I've heard no, she won't take it all, so I'm careful how that goes about, but for us to take all our recyclables of glass to her, um, we are going to have to really work that out with her to be able to accept the amount that we get. So she, you can take it there voluntarily right now if you want to take your wine bottles up and drop them off, or she's taken um, porcelain from uh, 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 old sinks and toilets that have been broken down. So she'll take it periodically, but um, the quantity that we produce, she I don't believe she's ready for it. Um, I don't know. I just suggest to everybody when you go to buy something, buy the wine in the boxes and your <laughs> peanut butter in a plastic jar. <laughs> it's a conscious effort, it really is, but it does make a difference. Uh, we had some kind of a public relations effort to get people to. to Shane and his efforts with the paper bag and all the communities that he's been visiting have been going over that whole concept. We're actually producing a commercial right now uh, to stress the importance of proper recycling. So we are moving ahead with some media campaigns as well. Are you are you in it? Any other questions? Oh yeah. Hedgers Waste, do they have to call ahead to... No, there's there? no registration. Okay. You just come by, there's a schedule of your na last name and what time you should, we choose to have you come, but people come whenever. Uh, <coughs> the uh, oh, four we, representatives to the Watershed Watershed, uh -huh. do they, from any or all of them have to be board, can be board representatives, or can they be? Are they any? Members? Is that what they wanted? Yes. They yeah. want all four to be. We have, I mean, we have that the representatives from each district um, kind of keep comprised, of just considering the re geographic region. The districts that uh, right. these eleven municipalities yeah. that are in that work, right. which would be Michelle and, and, and Kathy. And Kathy. And so by default, then we're putting those four on that committee. Yeah. And that'd be preferable. I mean, they can attend or choose to participate at whatever level they'd like, but we, in order to make sure that we have like, the maximum amount of transparency related to the process, we'll have to have a so that we can turn to what's happening in the town, so that what's happening in that concerned municipalities can address the representatives from any point of business, and the representatives can uh, respond to that. Admin, admin, admin. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was okay. I was just going through the Butternut Creek Watershed Management Plan and wondering if we would have because I actually represent New Lisbon and that would make five county board reps and just wondering if we would go into having like a quorum of the whole board. Just we're pretty weighty vote. Right. Uh, so, well, yeah, I'll give my report on you to work about that. Think about that. <laughs> think about that. Um, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Um, the administration committee, we, uh, many, as usual, many of the topics that we discussed at administration have come through in the reports of the committees and we finalized many of the things. One of the things I'd like to draw to everyone's attention, um, Sue Matt came in and discussed uh, a transfer of money to pay the New York State mental health bill that we have. This is money that is, and I didn't understand it, so I had her explain it to me, and I, so maybe that would help others. Um, when, when, a certain, when an inmate requires mental health facilities that we cannot provide, they go to a special facility and it, bottom line, it costs a lot. So 
Um, we had not had any of those cases for a number of years, and we had allocated the money into a different budget line for 2020, for 2019. So now we have to find it in another budget line and, and pay for that expense. Um, so we are looking to put it back in the budget as a bigger line going forward in 2020. Um, so ho hopefully um, the one transfer that we made, I think we need, we'll need to do another one. Um, we did the heap workers. Uh, we also approved uh, for the Department of Social Services employees to attend a conference on affordable housing and community development in Syracuse, which hopefully they'll be able to go to and attend, actually, and bring back ideas to uh, work on that very timely topic in our county. Uh, Board of Elections, uh, we've gone over that with regards to their requests in IGA. Um, the sheriff uh, came and also discussed those surplus vehicles and identifying them and pulling them out of the uh, stream that would be automatically go back to enterprise to put them, discuss strategies for making them available to other municipalities. And that is, as I understand it, still being uh, worked on what that actually might look like. Um, we approved the buses that we talked about in IGA, also the public hearing. Um, we approved the sexual harassment pro prevention policy, which is in the packet this morning. Um, and also approved of uh, the reappointment of Eve Lulis as Commissioner of Social Services. Uh, we tasked Brian Picorni with creating a video conferencing policy. Many of you have noticed the new big setup in the conference room, which allows for us to contact Alan Ruffles in Africa and have him participate right at the same level as if he were sitting at the table with his computer and lap. And uh, it's really <coughs> amazing. Um, we've discussed over the time that I've been on the board how to maybe facilitate or expedite the process of having department heads from the, down at the Meadows Complex come to this building for a two minute presentation. So we're working on a policy that might allow for that to happen from home, if you will. Uh, their work home. I'm going to say home. Not really home. The, of course the conversation did get into that level, but we quickly moved on. Um, we discussed uh, the development of an off-hour arraignment plan and how those judicial reforms are being implemented in the county. Uh, and then just this morning, we find we approved a enterprise vehicle list of vehicles that if we approve them now, we will save a lot of money. Um, so we went ahead and, and approved those vehicles. The list uh, appears as the late resolution, late resolution A. Oh no, late resolution B, I'm sorry. Um, also uh, approving the money that uh, Representative Frazier had mentioned, the public defender over a five year period will be um, uh, accumulating a total of two million five hundred twenty-five thousand plus uh, in the public defender's office, and we approved that as well this morning. Um, I think that was a mistake he made. I don't think it was two points. I think it, it, it aggregates. Up eight, eight, oh, eight yeah, so was oh. Well, then we need to make. I read it off this too. So the two point five million that he's per year. year. That's, that's per, per, an aggregate. An aggregate. Five, aggregate for five years. But, but it's, it's still only eight hundred some thousand. Oh, okay. well, got, well, in the uh, resolution it says for a total amount over five years of two and a half million. Right? That's not right. right. No, 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 that's, 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 that's correct. That's the correct. total. He but you said per year by asking Miss Slaughter and sixty-eight. No, but I do think that he said that the total came out to be different than two point five million. Yeah, I think so. he's right. 
The contract that was sent to us by the state says two million five hundred. Well, then who can find a way to spend it? Six hundred seventy-two dollars and twenty-two cents. Okay. It, <laughs> well, we'll stick to that and but find a way to. The way it works is you get about one hundred and sixty-eight thousand the first year, then you get double that amount for the second year, triple the first year, quadruple the first year, five times the first year for the fifth year. When you add up every year, it's two. And a half million. Okay. But year one is 168. Okay. And that's, that's what we're going ahead with. She said you had to keep adding 168. Yeah. The fifth year, the you're probably getting 800,000. So. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, that, so. that would be right. Five times. Mm -hmm. um, thank that's you. That's a difficult problem to have. I can't believe it. Um, any questions? No. I, I just want to highlight what you said about SUMAT's um, re new budget request for the criminal actions because this came from Health and Ed. I mean, last year we went back and forth in the budget process. Should we leave it in? Should we take it out? We definitely should leave it in. I think she put $100,000 in for next year. And so let's just like be done with it. Let's keep it in there. Just so right. let your people just you know, leave it in there. <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Yeah. Maybe. It's a good placeholder yeah. regardless. Right. Um, if we need it or not. So. All right. Any other questions? Oh, uh, well, I'll confirm it for the first time. I didn't say. <laughs> I always forget that part. Um, the 24th, 9-24, at 11 a.m. Okay. So, we move on to special committee's negotiations. Right. Thank you. Uh, performance review and goal setting. Just been doing evaluations and uh, um, executive session. Uh, uh, two uh, two things. Uh, first of all, we are uh, uh, working in admin and budget on uh, a structure for uh, uh, MNC salaries going forward, so we don't have to make up numbers out of nothing every year. Um, and uh, part of that may be a merit raise for MNC. Uh, um, uh, for department heads, which will depend on on uh, the outcome of their evaluations, um, and that's a, just a long way of saying these are more than just pieces of paper that we show. They will have impact, impact on these folks, and so we need to take them pretty seriously. The second thing is that, um, uh, and Liz, you can say more about this, but I think Liz and, uh, and Penny are working uh, to adjust the. Uh, um, <laughs> The policy that I think we approved last month uh, to to make sure that six month evaluations of new employees take place just at the uh, parent committee level with the, the in, with um, the personnel director there. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. we used to do it. We we had a situation yesterday, and we realized why are we even doing why PRGS was going to um, do a six month review, and, and we looked at why are we doing this because we never did that. We changed the policy, but we didn't really change that part. I, so Penny and I talked about this. We think we really just overlooked this, and we should have just put it back in. So we'll, she's drafting up something, we'll review it. But it's, it's, I don't really know why it got changed, because it's not specifically in the policy that we would change it. So I don't really know where that came from. But anyway, so we may have to review that policy and just add another session to that. So Yeah, it can't stay with PRGS, because uh, every other year, PRGS does not do any evaluations. And so if the six-monther comes up at, you know, during that time, it's because there's no much structure. Well, so, OK, so peak, so can we just establish that Public Works is going to do with yeah. six-month evaluation? Sure, I'm concerned. Yeah. Have a chance to do that. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Makes slightly makes sense. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So I think I'm just something overlooked. We'll fix that. So. Technology is key to planning. Technology. Uh, <clears throat> I, I I can't remember the day we met. Um, <laughs> it was uh, last week. Last week, um, and uh, yeah. So I know the minutes haven't come out yet, but uh, we uh, finalized our 
a special committee charge, which um, we we had taken a look at previously, and now uh, have sent to admin with the idea that admin re would review the uh, the committee description at the uh, September uh, administration uh, administrative committee meeting, and then approve that. Um, which would, would then come to the full board uh, for, I guess, for resolution. And I, I believe that's the case, right? Um, and we, uh, so we are working on our last two uh, committee work plans. Uh, we were using uh, the, the uh, Public Safety and Legal Affairs Committee and Administrative Committee both have um, a larger number of department heads that report to them, so we're, we're trying to use a survey tool, so uh, we set up some questions um, using SurveyMonkey uh, that uh, are asking department heads uh, the same kinds of input and feedback we collected for all the other committees, uh, but we're, we're just trying to collect it a little, uh, because there's so many of them, and trying to meet with them one-on-one, uh, -on -one, uh, or the committee meeting with each of them would, would not be possible. We're trying to get these last two done before year-end, so uh, we, uh, uh, Representative Frazier had sent out the survey to Public Safety and Legal Affairs and we already have five responses on that and we're I think uh, closing it out um, like September 16th something like that and uh, and with the idea that the next uh, strategic planning committee meeting on September 30th which I think is the last Monday of the month we would uh, have those survey results uh, from all the department heads in um, public safety or PSLA and be able to look at that. And so the, the other idea is uh, setting up a similar survey for admin, so we would look at that uh, at that committee meeting as well and that would go out shortly or go, go to, to uh, Representative Kennedy to send out to all the um, department heads in the administration committee. So so that, that we're really just trying to get those last two uh, committee kind of strategic work plans done uh, before year end, at least have them drafted. Okay. And while you have the floor, you want to mention uh, Atsigo Now? Yeah, Atsigo Now, uh, I would chalk it up, I guess, this summer vacation, but uh, the board didn't have quorum for the August meeting. So uh, they, there wasn't an actual board meeting, so the next board meeting is obviously uh, coming up here in September. So um, I think it's the, uh, the fourth Thursday that uh, the board will be meeting uh, to pick up on some business from last month. And then, so, and that will be forwarding that. Uh, so there are no minutes, obviously, so that's why there wasn't anything to forward anybody for August. Thank you. Any other questions? I think the one, one thing I just want to mention, uh, sorry, on, on Atsigo Now, which I think is of, of um, interest, especially with um, our previous discussions, uh, I think, uh, especially the, the first, uh, I forget, 2016 into 2017, when uh, the board first kind of tinkered with uh, videotaping our, our meetings and, uh, and kind of how that would be approached. All IDAs are mandated now to uh, broadcast their meetings live uh, and then to post those recordings. That that was a change coming from the state. Uh, and so uh, for our county board meetings. But we, we of course have the the uh, all at Seago that's providing that services at this point. So we're not highly motivated, but uh, maybe in the future. Thank you. Okay, budget. Uh, oh. okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as I said, we uh, were video conferencing with Alan Ruffles um, at the budget meeting. We ha now have all the, well, many of the requests for, from all of the departments are in a, a queued up line with a total, and then we have our revenues, and that line has been totaled. And so now we have to, um, work the budget out to a place where we can live with it. So um, I think uh, we can do it. Uh, there's plenty of uh, 
plenty of thought and effort have gone into the requests. Uh, plenty of thought and effort will go into the process of uh, reconciling uh, the money that we're, is available to us with the money that we would like to spend. Um, we also did discuss, as Gary mentioned, regularizing the MNC raises and how to put that into a, a process so that it is not overlooked. Um, also, uh, you know, we, we haven't really gone into the line by lines of all the additions, so uh, our next meeting is September 26th at 10 a.m., and I'm sure we'll be going further into the details at that time. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer, see if I can answer them. Any questions for budget? I'm relatively early in that process, but... Uh, I think we get a good start at it, and uh, I know Andrew, Andrew, our acting director, is uh, doing a good job, and it's mm -hmm. particularly uh, in encouraging that um, Mr. Ruffles has been able to participate as much as he had, so that's a, a great boost to all of us. Anything else for uh, special committees or outside meetings that we may have been involved in. Okay. We will move on then to no special reports. And move on to the consent agenda. Is there uh, anyone like to pull on the consent agenda? Yes, I'd like to pull uh, resolution 230. I'm sorry, 230? 230. Okay. Anyone else? Was 227? Uh, probably formally you need to do that because it is. Okay. Then 227, please. 227. <coughs> Any others? Pull. No, so we have 227 and 230. Okay, I would like a motion to dispense with the reading of all the resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> We're not too much in All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Motion carried. Is there any, uh, we already did that. We pulling represent, uh, resolutions 227-230. A call for action on the consent agenda. Favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you do a couple of calls? Both calls. Both calls. Both calls. Aye. Marietta? Yes. McCarty? Aye. Wilbur? Aye. Kotnick? Aye. Martini? Aye. Laffin? Aye. Shannon? Aye. 6,228 ayes, zero noes. The uh, consent agenda is passed. 227. Are, are you wanting to take that off? Yeah, the, the committee voted to remove it from the consent agenda this morning. Okay. Yeah. But, but not to consider individually. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Just to be tabled. Just to take oh, it out of the... Well, it's not been tabled. It's, it's been removed. From right. From it's removed agenda. from the consent agenda. Okay. I just it's, didn't want the clerk to read it because then it becomes in possession of the board. Right, it was removed prior to our okay. convening. Right, so it's not pretty good. So we got to say we can Resolution 230, authorizing the second to be paid to the Office of Specialist in Building Services of Racker, McCarthy, Wilbur, Barlow, and Lackland. 
So I'm, I'm pulling this um, resolution actually for, for two important reasons. One, um, this, this really doesn't address some of the uh, some potential issues that come up when um, we're talking about a stipend. And uh, if, if an individual was to be stipend and then go out on a sick leave or something that hasn't been addressed, that uh, the stipend wouldn't be in effect. It has to be under working. Uh, basically working hours, if you will. And the second was um, uh, due to a medical condition, um, our uh, department head was not available to come in and uh, discuss this. So Public Works feels that we should uh, we, we bring this up under you know, Public Works to, uh, to address. So are you, so you, you're I'd like to not, not move, to be voted I, I would no. like not to have it voted on. This is, this would be my, my pleasure. So, well, do you want to amend it today, or do you want to get to discuss this some more? Well, uh, since it's been read into the agenda, and if we would have to vote on it, it, would, it should have some nomenclature in there to uh, to ex it says exclude vacations and holidays, and then also uh, um, how do we address the sick leave? If someone were to go out on sick leave, um, are, are they technically being paid the stipend? We could all vote um, no. Yeah, I was just saying, we could all vote no. You could recommend that we all we vote no, and then it can come back change. It's going to have to change anyway. Right? That, thank you. Then that would be my recommendation, is that then we just simply vote no, allowing us the uh, opportunity to do that. Thank you, Gary. Motion is table. Vote no. Uh, oh, what's uh, what's your pledge? Vote table. Let's move. Uh, we need a second. Second. Why did you do that? We need a second. It was more discussion. Was if it didn't get second, we could vote on it. Right. All right. That's true. Uh, okay. I think you need to better explain what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> and you thought today was going to be an easy one. <laughs> I've learned it. Yeah. So I guess if I, if I could restructure my, uh, I'll, I'll pull this and, and I would like to vote on it to retable it. How does that sound? And to retable it for, again, to, to better define the, the stipend um, and its um, ramifications and, and the way it, it would be put together, addressing a sick leave issue, that was one thing that was brought to my attention. And again, um, I think Public Works could um, um, better define this process moving forward. So, everybody abstain. We would we'd be out of this for now. <laughs> Do we have a motion on the floor right now? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which is, yeah. We have a discussion on this here. That's it. The well, I, just, to pull. Uh, I move that we table it. Wait a second. Right. Then I withdraw my motion to table. So. Well, we have a motion on the floor. Okay. <laughs> we need to act on that before we have What is the motion on the floor? <laughs> the motion on the floor is this this resolution okay. here, as, it, as it's written. Okay. We have first, the second, and we've been discussing. So now we should vote. And if there is for, no further discussion, is anybody... <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, didn't you? want to call the question? <laughs> the nuclear route. Are there any downsides to not acting on this current? Current. Should we ask Penny? Was just here. Ask yeah. Penny. <laughs> I heard ask. I just came in, so I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. Well, so we pull. Yeah, I, I'm not as clear as to why it needs to be redone. So if, if we agree to the to it as written, how does it how does it address or under, under so I mean let me address this to the kind of, the way the resolution is written. Um, 
this individual is awarded the stipend uh, and then goes out on sick leave. Does that tech, does, do we pay that continued yes. stipend? So, yes. so that was something that wasn't addressed in this, and that was one of the reasons why I was right. pulling it to give us a chance to either rework that. Uh, Correct. That, that part of it, that nomenclature. Okay, so the individual receiving the stipend, this, that's what my confusion is. The individual receiving the stipend here is the one that's going to be going in. No, if no. she were. If she, if she, she the individual were. Yeah, right. Because I was thinking she's there. Well, yes, yeah, no, it's her anyway. I'm wondering if we should be talking about this in the next session. Well, one, one question we do to be clear is uh, what are we talking about also reclassifying that position? So, so we would have to worry about a side and it would be much more, but I mean, perhaps out of time for Probably should be executive session. I think he was talking about yeah, the individual. Right. 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 If we need to discuss it further, or we can act. Let's let's uh, vote and we'll decide later. Well, my recommendation would be if we're going to move forward and, and vote on it as written, that I, I I'm going to vote no, and then we can readdress it. Uh, and bring it back through in a, in a, a more concise form. So that, that's my opinion. Any other comments? And then I would just say that my this was discussed in public works and my and not acted on in public works to allow for some time. And then my understanding is then it went through admin. Um, I think that allowing for an extra month to get all the details right is not going to cause a harm because we can always make things retroactive. Frazier? No. Farwell? No. Clark? No. Stanna? No. Kennedy? No. Overacker? No. Bliss? No. Marietta? No. McCarty? No. Wilbur? No. Kotnick? No. Martini? No. Lappin? No. Shannon? No. I think that was the first unanimous no vote. I kind of felt abstaining just to see what happened. Ruin the record. Okay, zero eyes, 6,238 no's. Resolution 230 has failed. Yeah, do we need to do something about that? I, I, I don't know. It's the typo in, in the last one? Yeah, in yeah. 234 with the year. I mean, you mentioned it. I, I, I don't know. The year 2020 is supposed to be in the year 2030. Oh, that's hot. Substance can vote, yeah. and the whereas, and we can just correct that. Oh, we don't have to. Okay. If it was something significant, we could do that. If there are no objections, late resolutions A, B, and C will be acted upon as presented. I, on late resolution C, um, it lists Representative Lappin as an IDA member, but it should say Shannon. I know, again, not well, pretty substantial. I think that's a
Okay. So going to the PRD. That, that was in September, wasn't it? Or October. Okay. Oh, let me know. Because I was wondering. I never heard which one was going to do it or both. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah, I would do it at all. He's not ignoring you. You're there. You want to go to the video? Yeah, but it's not it. Now, what we can do is one round of solid waste, and then we can do another one on IDA to see if there were any sustained conditions. Okay. I wouldn't do it. But just it's nothing anywhere against OCCA, so. We'll wait till there's a support chair and then we'll Yes. Okay. Yep, that's how it's going. Okay. Do you like I'm just saying, okay, Leslie, let me just walk out there for one minute with you. Okay, let's uh, be convenient. So we made that change to resolution C. Do we uh, consider that to be Dr. Bond's representative? Do you have any other changes? What's the change? Oh, uh, just the committee on C. Oh, right. So fix the committee names. So a motion to act upon A, B, and C as presented. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adopted. Resolution A. Resolution A will now be 235, approving contract for grant funds from New York State Office of Independent Legal Services on Minus Oils. Contract number CST WID E HH35. Kennedy over after Frazier, Kotnick, Stamel. Second. Discussion? We'll call a vote then. Frazier? Aye. Farwell? Aye. Clark? Aye. Stamel? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Overacker? Aye. Bliss? Aye. Marietta? Yes. McCarty? Yes. Wilbur? Aye. Kotnick? Aye. Martini? Aye. Lappin? Aye. Shannon? Aye. 6,228 ayes, zero noes. Resolution 235 is passed. Resolution B will now be 236, authorizing chair of the board to order vehicles and enter into lease agreements for same with Enterprise Fleet Management Incorporated. Kennedy, Overacker, Frazier, Kotnick, Stamel, McCarty. Second. Discussion? Any questions? Comments? Okay, we'll call the vote. Frazier? Aye. Farwell? Aye. Clark? Aye. Stamel? Aye. Kennedy? Yes. Obrecker? Aye. Bliss? Aye. Mariana? Yes. McCarty? Aye. Wilbur? Aye. Kotnick? Aye. Martini? Aye. Lappin? Aye. Shannon? Aye. 6,228 ayes, zero noes. Resolution 236 is passed. Resolution C will now be 237, authorizing the chair of the board to contract with Verizon Wireless and Tenex Software Solutions for the purchase of equipment necessary for early voting in Otsego County. Kennedy, Oberecker, Marietta, Farwell, Shannon. Second. Discussion? I uh, just want to make clear, maybe you can update us back there. This funding is available. The, the, the funding that was just restored going to pay for all of this, correct? Yes, we are going to uh, use our reserve funds because it's, we have to submit the grant. We're using our reserve funds so that this is available for October for early voting. And then once we are reimbursed through the OGS contract, that money will go back into our reserve funds. Do you anticipate that in this budget cycle? I believe they do, yes. Great. And there's a lot of other costs that we're going to incur that we hope that we may get funding for in the future. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? 
We'll call vote. Frazier? Aye. Firewell? Aye. Clark? Aye. Campbell? Aye. Kennedy? Yes. O'Bracker? Aye. Bliss? Aye. Marietta? Yes. McCarty? Aye. Wilbur? Aye. Kotnick? Aye. Martini? Aye. Lappin? Aye. Shannon? Aye. 6,228 ayes, zero noes. Resolution 237 has passed. Any old business? Other old business? Any new business? Motion to adjourn. Second? Favorite? Aye. Aye. Thank you all for your time.